Afternoon, this is Papa of Builder of Things at My Shire Farm. You can find us at MyShireFarm.com, YouTube, My Shire Farm, Quality Quail. Uh, today we're going to be going into the main barn. The last video we did, we did in the uh, hatchery, and now we're going to go in the main barn. This is Maggie. He's a really big dog. Handy to pet, though, because you don't have to bend over, which is nice, huh, Maggie? Ooh. All right, My Shire Farm. Got a telephone number. <clears throat> so, we built this barn, have operational last November. This is the year 2020. Things got too crowded in the other barn. We started losing all of our efficiencies, and I got tired of wearing quail poop when we were cleaning out the cages. So, a couple of things that we were mandatory this time around, we wanted to keep the cages off the floor. Working around all the legs was just um, very difficult and you never could do it. So there was always a mess around the legs and flies would get underneath there and whatever. So having these off the floor, we used to really boast about our conveyor system. But the problem is, is when the conveyors broke, it was really messy to fix. So uh, I didn't want to do that again. So we came up with the idea of having a giant squeegee, and um, and maybe we'll do that side this time. And we, having a giant squeegee that pushed it into a gutter, and the gutter washed it away. And the next video we do will be where all that poops go to, and uh, that has just been um, we just did the last thing there, and of cleaning the tank out after six months, and all is well. So we're just pushing this thing through, and it drops out the other side, like so. And I'm gonna leave that in there. And we're gonna turn this guy here on. <clears throat> the next video will show you where all that goes and comes from. And George, the help here, he can clean, clean all 10 of these cages that you're looking at, five on each side, in six minutes. But there are six cages in each one of these, so there's 60 cages. Each cage has around 60 birds in it. So um, 3,600 birds, I guess, would be the math. So that's nice. And the reason I brag about that is not so much that I'm bragging I am, but it keeps our pricing down when we don't have to spend all day, every day, cleaning these out. We used to clean them once a week, and it was a pain. And now we clean them every day. So um, <clears throat> it, it's a beautiful thing. And it keeps the flies down. It, it just makes it possible for us to maintain the pricing that we do, keep our quail healthy, and, uh, and that's what we have to sell. So we can move on from the poop thing to the cage itself. So these are lined with ABS plastic. We buy it on our plastic thing so that we can keep this a little cleaner and not from rotting out. If it were just wood, it would rot out. If we didn't use wood here, this is metal. And then it has um, uh, this one by six here that makes, you know, creates the strength for this and uh, a place to mount this to. There's a two by six that goes the length of this eight foot cage. And that's really the backbone of this thing that holds it up. Because obviously you can't have any droopage or it will, you know, constrict your squeegee going through there. The slope of this thing is roughly two foot. And it goes from uh, the top of this two by four down to the bottom of this two by four. And this is an inch and three quarter, which is one half of a one by four. So we started by ripping one by fours, came up with these. Um, it's kind of complicated. It goes on here. There's a video on that, on how we actually built these cages. But, um, <clears throat> but the, st the structure of this 
is what you know kind of matters. And this all sets on a two by six frame with this set that's holding up by the unistrut and these half inch rods. Of course, we had to make the. Uh, <clears throat> you can see where it's screwed off. We basically have these two by eights, one foot on center, uh, in order to support the weight of this. But in terms of you know the the actual compression of this, they're pretty much close to the beams. On our playlist at, at YouTube, Zach has got all these broke down to playlists, so you don't have to scroll through however many we got now. And if you want to listen to my stuff, it's under Papa Shire, Papa, my uh, Shire Builder things. So we actually made these beams in the shop. Uh, these aren't particularly long. The ones that are in the uh, hatchery and the shipping room are 32 foot long. There's a little short video of us bringing down this 32-foot-long um, beam, and it's a pretty cool video. It's a drone that's uh, taken it, and it's a foggy morning, and it, it's, it, was, a, it was really awesome bringing that thing down here. <clears throat> so we we'll move on to the water, and the water system is a combination of, of uh, pressurized water, which is, has, which is on a... Uh, pressure reducer and so because we don't really want a lot of pressure coming through but it really wouldn't matter so it goes into this one inch line into this garden hose the garden hose has to be there because it goes into a ordinary cow water or system cow float twenty dollar item we've bought in some very expensive low pressure gasmos before and they've always failed uh, this is We've had cow waters here that have lasted six years, and that's a whole lot cheaper than a $300 poultry pressurized thing. From there, it's simply gravity. So this line here that goes all the way down to the end and all the way down to the other end is just gravity fed from this black tank, which is a sub-pump pit that I bought at Menards. And of course, we have a shutoff. The other notable thing here is our waters are on the outside of the cage, not on the inside. We had serious problems with the quail breaking them um, because they would you know, set on them and uh, that would affect the way that there wouldn't be any water. Somebody would get stuck underneath there and then the water would overflow. Uh, of course, if the water overflows here, it just ends up in the uh, gutter anyway, but we haven't had much water overflow problem at all since we moved that. <clears throat> the feeders, we've got videos on that. and um, But any waste that they kind of go, we just kind of scrape back into uh, the thing. The only one we have to deal with is the top one, where we can't do that. And the bottom one, we, we have a little tray that puts it back up onto the top. So it kind of takes care of the waste factor there as well. I think that's about it for the water, the feed, of course the fans. The whole design of this building is an old factory thing. The reason they used to do this is, A, they couldn't have big, tremendous spans because they weren't using trusses at the time. But the, way, the reason I want to do it is, A, I didn't want to have big, expensive spans either. Uh, but B, I wanted the double light. I wanted the skylights to be shining through and hitting those cages, vice versa, as opposed to just the lights coming in the, you know, the regular wall and only shine it. We have our, all these are LED lights throughout and I've made these lights with just um, task lights and some fancy stuff that I got from the scrap, scrap yard. Uh, the LEDs have been really working great. They're on a timer so that they, uh, they go off at night. We don't have to worry about turning them off when it's the 12 hours is up. We have epoxy on the floor, of course. And we power wash this down once a week. I think this was power washed a couple of days ago. Um, so you can see it stays relatively clean in here. And again, the reason we're going to all this trouble, these are not our quail. These are your quail. These are the quail that we sell to you. These are the eggs we sell to you. And if they were our quail, we may not take that good a care of them as we do, but they're not our quail, they're your quail. So we want you to know that we're taking good care of your quail and uh, hoping that you can uh, uh, take advantage of that and buy some quail eggs from us.
So I th the next thing we're going to do is go to the other end of that gutter. We're going to go outside and I'm going to show you how we recirculate this water, why we recirculate the water, and how we recharge the system, and yaka yaka. So this is Papa, my Shire Farm, signing off. Be sure to push the like button, share button, and the bell button so you can be notified. And Zach wanted me to mention that every Sunday uh, at 7, we have at this channel on Facebook and YouTube, nope, not Facebook, but YouTube, uh, my Shire Farm, uh, we have a live question and answer. And sometimes Zach lets me go on there too, not very often, but he will let you know when I'll be on to answer some of your build questions and happy to do that. We're going to be going around the entire farm. We do a lot of homesteading stuff here as well. So uh, I'm really excited that he's invited me to show you a little bit more than what just the quail business is. So Papa, signing off. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.